Godox has finally released their first high-powered Cobb LED light at 600 watts. It's part of a new family of lights, so hopefully we'll see more soon. But the major question here is, is how does it compare against the new announced Aperture 600D as well as the older 600D Pro? What's going on everybody? To London Read Filmmaker here, where the answers comes first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. I want to thank Pergear for sending this out to me so I can provide you with this review today. Now, I don't actually have the Aperture 600Ds in to actually give you a head-to-head -head comparison, but there is enough information out there so we can kind of get an idea of which one is going to be right for you. Without further ado, let's get started. Coming in anywhere from $1,400 to $1,500, depending on who you're buying it from, you get the light, a reflector, ballast, some power cables, a super clamp for the ballast, and a light stand spigot, not entirely sure what the spigot is for, and of course, a rolling case. Now, when it comes to the build quality, it feels very solid. Everything is predominantly made out of metal. Now for power, you can either go through the AC mains or a 48 volt XLR battery pack or power station. And lastly, you can power it with either one or two Sony V-mount batteries. Now the great thing is, is that you can either use a 14.4 volt or a 26 volt V-mount battery. However, you can't actually achieve full output power. Here are the various battery combinations you can do to try and achieve up to 60% output. The ballast has some nice simple buttons and rotary dials to control your light. I'm happy to say that the dimming levels go in 0.1 increments for very accurate lighting, and you can basically go as low as 0.1%. There is a fan mode button here that lets you quickly turn the fan off and also return to the previous fan mode you were on. The next button is the FX button, and pretty much this just takes you to the normal lighting effects that you see from lights these days. Now, if you hold the FX button down, you will actually lock the ballast settings so that no one can accidentally change it and simply hold the FX button down one more time to unlock. Lastly, the menu button brings up all your normal settings like wireless, Bluetooth, and of course your fan settings. You can choose either fan off, low, high, or auto. And depending on what fan settings you have on, here are the maximum outputs you can achieve. Moving through the menu systems, we can see that you can choose your preferred dimming curve, as well as change the brightness of the LCD screen on the ballast itself. And last but not least, this light can be controlled with the newest current Godox light app. When we look at the output from six feet away, we have plenty of power to work with. If you have the fan mode set to low, we're getting what I believe is approximately a 300 watt equivalent. And if you have the fan mode off, based on all my lighting tests on this channel, it seems like it's approximately a 100 watt equivalent. Now, when we pop on the reflector, we of course see the numbers jump way up, but this is simply because the reflector has a huge hotspot in the middle. So these are the numbers in terms of the hotspot in the middle. When we do the color checker test after I dial in the Kelvin instead of doing a custom white balance, we see that the colors are actually quite good and typical for pretty much all the daylight cob LEDs these days. Now because this is a powerful light, we do have a fan inside as well as in the ballast itself. So let's see how loud these fans actually get from various distances of which I will mark on the left side for your reference.
Now let's see how the light can compete against the sun when we expose the camera for the sun. For the indoor stress test here, we don't quite get enough exposure, but a little level adjusting in post can get you something usable. Now with the sun backlighting me, we are able to fill my face just fine with the M600D. Here's another example if the sun is side lighting me and I'm using the Godox as my fill. Lastly, if you are in some shade, the M600D is powerful enough to lift you out of the shade. Now, if you don't care about the sky being blown out at all, you have a lot more wiggle room to work with when using the 600D outside. So what's the bottom line here? Should you get the Godox M600D? Now there's actually two questions we need to kind of ask here. Number one, do you even need a 600 watt Cobb LED? And number two, Aperture recently announced their 600D, not the 600D Pro that's already out. The 600D from Aperture is literally the same price as the Godox, so which one should you get? Let's break this down. Let's answer the first question. Do you need a 600 watt Cobb LED light? Now, the things that you need to consider about why you would need something like this is if you are now in the part of your filmmaking career where you're not lighting up small scenes in a bedroom, a kitchen, a living room, you're starting to light much bigger spaces, in which case you're gonna need some more light because maybe this scene is kind of like a, a tracking shot and you're following people throughout, in which case you're probably gonna need something much larger to blast light the way you want it to, whether you're keeping it natural, whether you're keeping it moody, something like that, so that the lights are much further away and the camera people can actually be inside the scene versus sometimes they're outside of the scene where the lights are, which is what a lot of indie filmmakers tend to have to do. We're shooting behind all these light sources. When you can actually shoot inside the light source, it gives you so many options. So that's one of the things to think about is you are lighting up this insane big amount of space. Number two, maybe you are trying to do a daylight type of shot and you're trying to do it inside of a living room. Well, what you can do sometimes, whether it's an independent film or a Hollywood film, is what they would do is they would create this blackout tent on the outside of the house, and it basically blocks out any sun coming into the living room, let's say. And in that case, you would have this 600D inside the tent, blasting light through, simulating the sun, and therefore you can shoot the same scene with the same consistent lighting, for pretty much as many hours as you need. Number three is if you are diffusing the light, you're shooting it through maybe an eight by eight diffusion curtain, you're really trying to get that soft light. And you also notice as a DP that you don't necessarily wanna shoot at F1.4 with whatever your focal length is because then your detail is like so, so small and razor thin. Maybe you want to see a little bit past the actor's face to the ears in which case you have to stop down the lens. Now, depending on what light sources you have, maybe a 120D or a 300D shooting through a large diffusion curtain and then you stopping down the lens, you notice that you're not getting the right exposure and you don't necessarily want to raise the ISO because depending on what color profile you're shooting in, you could start introducing some colored noise or what have you. It really depends on what camera you have. But in this type of situation, if you have a 600D blasting through the diffusion, you actually have a lot more headroom to allow you to stop down the lens to like an F4 or an F5.6 and still get the same exposure. Those are kind of the scenarios of which you would need a light like this. Okay, and the second question here is Aperture 600D or Godox 600D, which one should you get? Now the easy, easy answer here is, is if you already have a bunch of Aperture lights already, then you should probably just stick with the Aperture. You're not gonna lose out on anything, you'll be fine. If you have a bunch of Godox lights, especially the newer ones that uses the Godox Light app, use that, get, get the Godox 600D. Stay in the same camp, you'll be fine. But if you are kind of mixed in terms of lighting and you don't have a brand loyalty to either one, then which one should you get? Because even though they share the same price point, there are a couple features that are different that the Godox has that the Aperture doesn't. So in terms of similarity, we got similar price. They both are not weatherproof or weather resistant. And then they both cannot achieve full power when you are using the V-mount battery. So those are the two-ish, two three things that are similar. 
where the difference here is is that the aperture does not allow you to charge the v-mount batteries through the ballast the godox on the other hand you can actually charge through one of the v-mount ports through the ballast so there is a little plus side there and then in terms of dimming and brightness settings the Aperture 600D allows you to go in 1% increments, and the Godox M600D goes in 0.1% increments, so you have much more fine-tuning in terms of brightness. So at the same price, I would say, technically speaking, the Godox has a little bit more features, mainly the fact that you can charge one of your V-mount batteries and you have more dimming capabilities in terms of fine-tuning everything. And then when you take a look at the 600D from Aperture, it basically has all the essentials you do need and whether or not you actually care about charging through the ballast and going in 0.1 increments in those cases then you'd have to go up to the 600d pro from aperture so now you might be wondering okay well i do like the idea of charging through the ballast i also like the idea of actually getting full power and not just half power through the v-mount batteries those are all on the aperture d pro so here's here's the next question should you actually spend 400 dollars more to get that one over the godox or the aperture 600d in which case if you know you are going to be shooting out in the elements and there could potentially be water in the scene uh, maybe it's for a commercial or possibly that you might be outside in the elements and there's going to be rain coming down in which case the aperture 600d pro makes more sense for that type of I guess professional team you need to be able to do everything you need to do no matter what so the 600d pro makes sense but i would actually tell you to do this as much as it's you know 400 dollars more i would actually incline you to check ebay and the used market because i've checked a couple times and the most times that i've seen the aperture 600d pro show up on ebay most of the dps or whoever's out there selling it they're selling it for like $1,500 at the cheapest, and I have seen like $1,600 approximately. So you're going to save yourself anywhere from, I think, about $300 to $200. And hey, guys, that is the end of this video. I hope this has helped you get an idea of which 600D Cobb LED you should be thinking about. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it down below. I will get to them as fast as I can. And until the next time, like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys in the next one.